Greetings everyone through here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the demo for today. So this demo, we're going to look at two really exciting features in Snowflake that was recently announced. One will allow you to load data into a Snowflake table. And the second feature will allow you to load and manipulate data within a Snowflake stage. Now, links to all of this will be in the description below. If you're not familiar with these features, as always, would highly recommend you check out the documentation to get familiar with what these features are very powerful for bringing in data you need for your analytics, enabling self-service, supercharging your data platform, loading data into Snowflake, leveraging the web interface. Now for that, let's go back into a demo to see what that looks like. Let's go back over into the environment and create a brand new table. Let's go ahead and call this table demo customers. Switch back over into the UI, do a quick refresh. And now we see a demo customers table, but this table is blank. There is no data. What we want is to get data into this table to really supercharge and see what our customers are doing, their buying behavior, they're gonna churn. Having all this data will allow us to pull out those types of insights. So for this, select this customer table. You will see this new button that shows up on the top right side of your screen that allows you to load data. So go ahead and click on that and then browse to wherever you have that data on your local machine and that will allow you to import that data. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this gives us the option to upload the file. There is a little bit of a caveat and a recommendation here for that file size to be 50 MB. So just something to be aware of. And obviously we're using a demo warehouse to upload that file. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the file, browse to the location, select the demo customer. So this is a CSV file we had preloaded. Right now, this file is 80 KB. Click next, select the file format. CSV is what I want. Let's take this without skipping the first row just to see what happens. And obviously there is a documentation here if you wanna go ahead and see more details. So if there are errors, it's highly recommended you get this configurations or setup. Click on next. And it says, fail to load data, there is an error. The reason for this error, if you imagine more CSV is the first row is the column names. So we have to fix that, which doesn't match the column type. So go back, go ahead and skip the first line. So the column names are not being brought in. So go ahead and click next. And just like that, we've successfully loaded a thousand records we have into our Snowflake table. Click done. That has been loaded. Let's switch back over and do select star from customers and query that. With this capability, you have a self-service way to bring in data into your Snowflake experience without having to do a lot of work. Now, if this is something that you want more often, like regularly, every day, every hour, then you're going to have to think about doing ETL and getting an ETL tool to support that. But if this is a one-time offload, you're just wanting to bring in a quick reference data that doesn't have to come in often, this capability provides a very powerful way to do that. So that load was successful. Now go to table details, data preview, and just like that, we can preview the data we've loaded. Go to copy history. We also see the copy of data that came into this table. You can load as many times as you want. So let's go back and bring in the North America companies into this table. Similar settings, do not load, skip the first row, and the North America records are loaded into the table. So if you're looking to bring data into your Snowflake environment and you want this quick and easy self-service way to bring that data, this option of loading data could be a very powerful and exciting option to look at. There's really no limit in terms of what you can do. Now, that is a good example we've seen. You can bring in the data and you can also query that data. Now, what if the scenario is not just regular data we want to work with? You might be looking at images, videos, DICOM files, X-ray, a ton of unstructured data within the Snowflake environment. That's where the stage comes into play. And there are some really cool updates in the stage within Snowflake to call out. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at that. So here are my stages. So I'm not working with tables anymore. I'm working within stages. So for this, let's create a brand new stage for this demo. So I'm going to go ahead and create that stage. The name is demo stage. Go back over here 
and do a quick refresh, we now have a stage called demo stage. And this is an internal stage. Obviously, you can create an external stage that looks like a volume on S3 or Azure Blob or GCS. But in this case, we're using the S3. Here is my stage. There are a couple of things that you can do. Obviously, a stage without data isn't as useful. So for this, what we want is to self-service, bring data into the stage. And now Snowflake supports that. Click on files, again, browse. And right here, we can select the file and you can bring arbitrary file formats into this. So this could really be your data lake. So any file format, CSV, JSON, Excel, XMLS, Avro, Parquet, you name it. The sky really is a limit in terms of the ability to build a data lake with this capability. And this is an internal data lake, or you can build obviously an external data lake that uses S3 as an external storage if your requirements need that. Go ahead, select that, open, and you can upload this, or let's go ahead and cancel. We can select three files and open, and you can bring in multiple files. So there's really no limit. Let's say we call this a base customer. So think about it almost as your folders. Upload, just like that, Snowflake is uploading those records into our stage. Very fast, very performant. Now let's go ahead and check that. We know how to query a stage, which is just an LS. Uh, we're going to look at that stage. So right there, we have those three files showing up in the stage. And we can actually go in and query those files using stage commands. Now, a couple of things to call out beyond just bringing data into stage. What you'll notice is this option directory tables. Let's double click on this a little bit. And you can always go in and look at the documentation. Now, before we double click on that, what I'm going to do is Let's create a brand new stage here. And we're going to call this stage demo stage DT. If we go back, take a look, we have a new stage. This stage is called demo stage DT. And when we created the stage, one thing was different. We did this configuration here that said enable directory table true. So you can either do it when creating the stage, or it's just as the same as if you come in here. Uh, select that, clicking on this to enable directory tables. So what does a directory table allow us to do? That's what we're going to see here. Before we jump into directory tables, let's get some files loaded in here. Go ahead and bring in the first three files and load that into my stage. I have the files loaded and you can always see your stage details, control all the access the way you want. Obviously, this is an internal stage. Now, the beauty and power of the stage, especially with a directory table on top, is the ability for you to now query the stage because Snowflake indexes the stage, stores the metadata, and you can search file names, file format, file sizes, all of that on that stage with blazing speed because all of that has been indexed. Where this is different is if you try to query, let's say you're using an external stage and you try to query the metadata on S3, you could do it, but you're not going to get the performance that you get as opposed to having Snowflake index that with the directory table and then you're searching the metadata in Snowflake as opposed to hitting S3 with all these queries just to search for a list of files that have a specific name. Enough said, let's jump in and see what this actually looks like. So now we have those files loaded. I'm going to go back. We can also do an LS on a stage as before. This gives us the details of a stage, the name, the size, MD5 hash, which tells us if this is a new or unique file. We can always refresh that. But here is the difference. We can LS a stage. So we're LS in the TT stage, directory tables. Watch what happens when we query using this predicate that says directory. And this is a directory table on that stage. So if we go ahead and run that, it's going to give us way more details. So there is a file name, the relative path, the size, last modified time, MD5, e tag, and then it gives us a file URL. This becomes important because then you can use this for your machine learning model, for training, for inference, or embedding this within applications that need you to hold on structured data. You can also get the pre signed URL, obviously, if you want. If you're not familiar with what any of those are, leave it in the comment section below, and we're going to make some videos about that. So it's really powerful for building your data lake. I can search across my data lake 
and look for files that have a specific file size. In this case, I'm looking for files greater than this file size. And voila, we have the results blazing fast. These are all the file URLs that are greater than that. All right. We can do some more search and pick out the name positionally. That's something that you can do. Alternatively, we can run a command where we take a look at the entire data lake to show us the files that have a specific name in the file name. You've seen this coming in milliseconds. Try doing that across your data lake on, say, an S3 location. If you haven't indexed that, you're not going to get the same performance. Okay. So having Snowflake index that with the directory tables gives you that type of power. I know it's not very illustrative here because we have just three records in the stage. Assume you have thousands or millions or billions of records. You would want Snowflake doing that search as opposed to just trying to search S3 bucket yourself. Very powerful. Let's go back one more time. And a couple of things to call out here. If you remember, we have three records. I'm just going to go ahead and bring the same three records and upload them with no change. You notice nothing really changes. Why? Because it's the same file. So we're not going to allow duplicates coming in. The MD5 hash would still be the same. So a very important concept to be aware of. Now, if we go back, um, I think I have the same files. I just renamed them a little bit different, but the records are still the same. Now we can upload this, okay? Because the records might be the same, but we've made some changes to the name. So. Just one additional check to help you avoid duplicates. If you're bringing the file the same, it looks at the MD5 hash. If something has changed, bring in a new record. If nothing has changed, then we don't want to be bringing in all those records. So just like that, we have our new records loaded here. Now, if I go back here and I do my search, similar search again, now you see two files showing up as records. Now imagine you were searching for files that came from a particular region across the globe or a file that had a particular name in it from thousands and thousands of files. From a governance perspective, from a data lake perspective, this allows you the capability, obviously, to do that. And we can go in and count the number of records that we have. Six, create a file format, easy to do. And once we have a file format, we can leverage the file format to query that table. So again, this is something very straightforward to do. Let's go ahead and query that. Leveraging the file format, see the actual records. These are things that you should be able to do already. The documentation shows all of this, but you can think about Snowflake really as your data lake. You can learn all these files and then access them with the power of Snowflake compute that has indexed all those files and allow you to query them. Okay. Now, if you go back over here, we have just what, six records, not a lot, not very illustrative. Let's unload more records to the stage and see how fast we can still query that. Use this command. And what this does is it's going to load data into my stage. You can obviously upload the files yourself, but this is a way to just unload data from a table into a stage. It takes a few seconds, so this will be complete. All right. So that completed and ran for some time. I did go ahead and cancel it just so we don't have it run for too long. But the end result is if we go back to our previous stage, you're going to see lots of files loaded in different sizes. Now imagine we want just all the files that have a particular name format or something within the name and we want to search that. So we can search on this as if we're searching almost on a table and we're getting the same type of performance. Here's the search, go to directory table and search the name of the file that contains or has three in that name. Let's see how fast that came back and it's giving us all the files that have three in there, right? This could be all the files that came from a particular region or from a particular vendor or that have a particular issue, or you can go inside of the file to search for records. But we're essentially building a data lake here with the power and the scalability of Snowflake with structured data. You can search for images, you can search for video file names, you can search for whatever you have sitting on your data lake using the power of Snowflake. For Just to recap what we've seen, two really cool functions in Snowflake. This is in preview, so go ahead and check them out. Very amazing. One, if you have a table, you can now load data directly into that table, leveraging SnowSite. Second, if you have a stage, you can always load files into the stage or structure files, semi-structure files in any format. And this is going to manage it almost like a directory 
right from within your Snowflake. If you create folders as such, you can see the folders will show up. You can drill down to those folders and really manage your data lake almost like you manage files on your local machine with folders and good organization and the ability to search out all of that, leveraging the indexing capability of Snowflake. Hopefully this was helpful. Links to all of this should be in the description. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to jump into the comment section below and let me know and we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching. This has been through here with Demo Hub. I'll see you in our next demo. Thank <laughs> you.